<clears throat> also, uh, gators are a good thing to have for, for your protection for, uh, when you're out in the, in the cold, just to keep the snow from going down. So just to, you always hear uh, the thing that polar fleece is warm when wet, okay? But you never hear anybody doing an experiment about uh, how warm is it when it's wet, okay? Is what I want to know. You know, what do you mean by that? Because it's just a very qualitative uh, 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 statement. Well, I have done measurements, and so I can give you some rough idea of what it, what it is like. So at the Porcupine Mountain, I took my, I took um, this, Polar fleece booty. I was wearing basically uh, the black, the black muckalock that you saw with the polar fleece booty, and I took one of them and totally put my foot totally in water. Okay, so I wetted one foot, took it out, took it out, and wrung everything out, and put put everything back on. So I have one dry foot and one wet foot, and I put through two thermistors into each sock. Okay, just to measure register my surface uh, temperature on my foot of each foot. This was at 30, or uh, this was a little bit less than freezing, so it wasn't really that cold. But my dry foot had a temperature of 79 degrees. The foot that had the totally besotted uh, polar fleece that had been wrung out, and you know, the sock and everything that had been wrung out, I was at 70 degrees. So that is quite, uh, quite amazing, to be honest. Because if you want to compare that, and these, these are, you can find these write-ups in your handout here that I, that I uh, the products that I tested. So that means like everybody would, nobody would uh, probably be cold walking along a beach with their feet in 70 degree water. You wouldn't say, say your feet are, are cold, right? And my feet weren't cold, is, is the incredible thing. So that is uh, so at least some hard data on how well that the polar fleece will keep you warm when wet, okay? Yeah. What about your eyes? Do you speak out of those with you? Uh -huh. Yes. When it gets when it gets really cold, of course, you can you can actually there's tears and, and your eyes can start to freeze. So you do need to have your eyes protected, and 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 of course you're going to uh, want to actually protect all of your face when it gets cold. So yes, we do wear ski goggles, and um, it probably didn't catch it, but I had I have like goggles that are just like this for uh, for um, uh, for that protection. And also, you have to protect yourself from snow blindness. Oh well. They have masks. They sell like these thermal type masks. Are those any good? I haven't seen them. Are those the neoprene or? or? Uh, I'm not sure, but they, they recycle heat or what? I try wearing neoprene. Right. Got wet, didn't it? Yeah, it's just so ridiculously hot. Right. Right. That was a scheme. So I would I would go with something like the. When we're moving, we're constantly adjusting our clothes. And what you want to be able to adjust is especially around your head and neck. And so I would go with something like uh, a gator which comes up over your nose, okay? Th like this is a full face gator. And it's, I think the company is still in business. It's Wyoming Woolens is who makes this. And uh, I mean, they make great polar fleece stuff. And this, this one will come literally up to here. And, and when it gets real cold, I have a, a gator that's open on the face, and then I put a gator that's closed over that. And you know, we just don't get cold. And, and that allows you to quickly adjust your clothing around your, around your head. Do you take any extra of your tissue you lose something? Because I don't know. That's a really good question. Yeah. That uh, we do take an extra set. Uh, and I, I say that because, you know, you'll go with expedition leaders or expedition members that have more than one set, okay? One extra set is all you need. If you start to take more than one set, you become really lazy in managing your gear. Everybody that I have seen that has three or four sets, they think, oh, I got three or four sets. So they get one set wet, and it ends up frozen in the bottom of their sled. Totally worthless now, because they're not going to get it dried out. They're not going to take the time to unfreeze it. Okay, so two sets of gear is what you need, and, it's, and thing, things like that can get wet very easily, like gloves. Like I have problems with my hands. My hands are often very cold. I may take an extra glove liners or an extra pair of mittens or something like that. But only uh, we do take an extra set. And we take you know two sets of clothing, and usually like if I'm on a big expedition. 
we may actually have a person that takes like one extra set of underwear just for the group of us in case something would happen, uh, you know, uh, like we got an extra set of underwear in here, okay? But you, know, you can overdo it, and, and I, I promise you that every expedition that I've been on that I saw people that had more gear than they should have, they were the, always the coldest, and they always got the frostbite. On those expeditions, we have sleds. Yes. And is, is weight less determinative than, like, say, backpacking? Uh, yes, yes. But, but, and you're going to have extra weight with, you know, just the gear that you have. Um, of course, I've been on two different ones. One was with the, the pulling the poles, which you saw these people. And you, you have to be weight conscious, of course, there. With the dog sleds, we pretty much are not that weight conscious. We are, but not to the degree that we should be, okay? Yeah, because the dogs can, can handle can handle that much weight, and and, and, and the tra you know, there's always the trade-off, right? But with the with, when you're pulling the sled, you know you're going to probably have about 100 pounds with you uh, of, of gear for uh, you know five or ten day expedition. And how much do you carry? Do you carry anything on your back? Yes, you do. You carry some on your back in a in a backpack, and then you have and then you trail the rest in your sled, and it kind of balances you out. You know, if you've got everything in the sled, it's, it's, it doesn't quite feel right. Yeah, so usually I think we probably had 25 pounds on our back and then the rest in the sled. Okay, one other thing about the foot, footwear is that it will get wet and there's, everybody's done this, it's probably been cold weather camping. If you do not reform it before you go to bed at night, it's gonna be frozen and you won't get it on the next morning. Okay, unless you're gonna be like the native women and chew your muggalugs, okay? To get them so that they're supple again, okay? So you will wanna be thinking about, you know, a lot of people just say, I'm gonna throw it underneath my sleeping bag and it kinda of gets me up off the ground here and I'll throw my muggalugs underneath there. But if they're at all wet, which you may not be able to discern until the next morning, but if they're at all wet, they'll wake up, you'll wake up and they'll be frozen and they'll, they won't have a form that you can get back into them. That's another reason that I liked those those big uh, mufflers that I had with the big closures at the top. Yeah, because I could always get in, into those. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking, how often during an expedition during the day by the moon do you change clothes or do you? We don't change clothes. Yeah. yeah. If you overheat, you take off. And yeah. Overheat. Trust. Me. Right. If you over if we overheat. We try to adjust so that we're, we're trying to maintain a temperature, but we're always, almost always hotter than we want to be because, because um, there are several things that are going on. You know, you're making, a, when you're pulling the sled or skiing, you're making a lot of heat. You also have to be very careful in taking clothes off uh, that you can't, that you would get frostbite. For example, it was sunny in, in uh, the, we were going to the magnetic North Pole, and it was sunny one day, so she felt the sun on the side of the face. It felt great. The other side got frostbite. Okay? The side that wasn't in the sun got frostbite. Okay? So it could be that subtle, you know, uh, you know, and she did probably didn't feel cold, but the wind was on one side, the sun was on the other side, and the, and the side that the wind was on got frostbite. Okay? So you have to be very careful and in, 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 what, knowing what the temperature is and how much flesh that you're actually exposing. Now, talking about this, because uh, this, I mean, I like this interaction and it doesn't necessarily follow this, but when we do, when we are moving, we don't change clothes even if we get them wet. You're gonna, because then now you're, you're wearing, you know, you're not managing your clothing right. So you want to start to dry it on your body. And the only way to dry it on your body is to change your pace. So as we would like, we would maybe go for like 10 hours a day, be moving, right? The last two hours, we would be going slower, okay? We would start to, to, to pace down, to start pacing down, so that we're no longer sweating and we're drying our clothes, so that when we now stop, our clothes are dry, okay? So when we finally get there, you know, because well, that's when you're gonna start getting cold is when you finally stop. So we're not, so when we finally stop, we want our clothes to be dry. It's, and it's all in thinking ahead of how you're going to manage your clothing, okay? And you just say, okay, we got, 
you know, so much further to go and start going slow. And isn't it sort of natural anyway because you're tired? And yeah, yeah, and you're stumbling and, and everything else. Changing and yeah, you know, it's yes, and, it, and so it does happen. You know, it's not it's not a difficult thing to do. <laughs> do, you still carry, do you still carry a pair of dry long underwear to put on sleep in? Uh, yes. Change those out? Uh, no, not to sleep in. I would carry, uh, carry a dry pair in case I well, well, had an accident that I couldn't get warm. No, we. I slept in the same pair of stuff that I that I was wearing, in anticipation that I want to dry everything. Okay, and if I got so that I couldn't stay warm in the sleeping bag, then I'm going to have to change. You know, if it got to a degree that I'm actually freezing and I'm not getting any rest, then I'm going to change clothes. But as long I'm going to teach you some tricks about that. As long as long as it has a white cloth. Yes. As long as I can, as long as I can stand it, and, and and be drying my clothes, I'm going to be doing that. Okay, I don't want to put those wet clothes ever away, because uh, putting them on the next morning with ice on them is just no fun. That's the worst part of the day is waking up and putting on clothes. You know? Yeah. I know they have real special kind of creams for the sun. Uh huh. Uh huh. Do they have anything for frostbite that you can put? Yeah. To protect your there are, you know, there are creams. Any any kind of cream would probably help you with frostbite. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, some of the creams that the Norwegians make. What is the name of that uh, one balm that they make? You know, just things that you use for suntan lotion will actually help help protect your face. Okay. Uh, also, when you're thinking about your clothing, you also have to think about ice in the zippers, snaps, and velcro. So if you're starting to get all this high-tech clothing with lots of zippers and stuff, you're opening yourself up to a problem, okay? Because all that zipper has to do is fail. I mean, oftentimes, the difference between life and death is whether your zipper's working in your sleeping bag. Okay, think about it. You know, because if that zipper doesn't zip shut, it's gonna be a long night unless you can get the, some other way to, to keep the air out, okay? But so, like when you're thinking of buying gators, or when you're thinking of buying your anorak or anything, think about how am I going to get this closed if the zipper fails? Okay. Well, don't all sleeping bags have zippers? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you don't want to be rough with it and break it. <laughs> yes. I thought maybe they didn't have some kind that didn't have a zipper. No. No, but if it if it fails on you, you are in a world of hurt. You're probably going to be in a sleeping bag with somebody else. Well, mine actually has an inner, Velcro. it's a two-layer, so it's got like a fleece in bag, it can uh -huh. be really cold. Right. So conceivably one couldn't zip, and if you right. there, I might be okay. Yeah, you might, but, uh, but uh, when you're, when your things like your zippers start to fail, I mean like the, 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 uh, the thing with the anorak, or the anorak? It's over The thing with the anorak is it does have a zipper. But it doesn't have much. The only thing is, is this top part right here, this top zipper around your neck. Mm -hmm. That's the only zipper. And another thing about the anorak, which is, you know, I'm going to talk about very practical things here, is that it goes down low. It's like a skirt down here. When you have to go to the bathroom, it helps a lot, <laughs> you know, to be able to squat and have that skirt around. It. Believe me, the anticipation is 10 times worse than it actually is when you have this this anorak, and actually the native anoraks are even longer than this, and they're slid up the side, exactly for that purpose, okay? So that, that you'll be able to function out in the cold weather and not freeze in the, in the, you know, the few minutes that you're out there with the wind, okay? So when you squat down, you're basically in the tent? No. I mean, you're yeah, down in the tent, yeah. 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 yes, tent. exactly, and it's not cold. You do not get cold for the amount of time that it takes, right? Yeah, so you know, like a, a, a jacket that just comes to here, it's not going to be long enough. You know, so it kind of looks like a dopey and the dwarves walking around. <laughs> you know, because uh, our, 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 some of our stuff is pretty uh, saggy. You know, it come, our, our anoraks come down to here and stuff. But uh, it all has a function. Okay? Any questions on clothing? So, that's a good question.